Hi, my name is Jalen Law. I'm one fifth part of the art collective um, Buffalo Zone as well as a urban arts collective um, group artist. And here today we are at Chateau Buffalo Winery, 1500 Clinton Street for the Palette to Palette Art and Wine Experience. This is a partnership between Buffalo Zone and Chateau Winery's owner, Carl Schmitter. Hello, my name is Lisa Brown, also known as Angel Lee. Not only do we have events here, we also have a show that we have once a month where we interview artists, up and coming artists in Buffalo, New York. Um, if you are interested in being interviewed at any time, just give us a call or contact Jalen Law. You will find that we have many pieces of art here on the wall from our artists, James Cooper, D. Edwards, and Jalen Law. Um, we're gonna talk to James Cooper today and Dee Edwards. Um, we have one more artist, Jay Hawkins. He's not here right now, but he'll be in shortly. We're gonna take it to Dee Edwards next. As I stated, we have several artists here. One is James Cooper standing right next to me, James. Hello, hello. Um, I'm glad to be here today for this uh, Palette to Palette. Beautiful. beautiful, it's so beautiful. Uh, we got the people coming out. It's a family oriented, mature event. So we have children here, but we have wine tasting. We have wonderful food, artwork, different people, different professionals. Some have just retired, I just found out. So it's a wonderful kind of, excuse me, winding down. Beginning of the week for some people. Some people are just chilling. So this is great, definitely. Oh, the project I was working on earlier, I did a mural um, that's installed now in the Dillon Courthouse, Federal Courthouse, formerly known as Dillon Federal Courthouse, now the Police and Fire Campus downtown, located at Court in Niagara. Um, it was installed as of yesterday, and they're going to do an official, I guess, grand opening ribbon cutting on uh, Thursday, November 1st. Um, very fortunate to be um, selected to do that project. Um, as far as the movement in Buffalo now with the murals that are going on, public art initiative, shout out to John Baker, shout out to um, Emerson Barr from the Buffalo um, Arts Commission, shout out to Rashawn Sanubi who gave me all the specs I need to know to get the project done, um, and also Pat Sullivan who did a wonderful job installing it, made my work look beautiful inside that space, so thank you so much folks. Also, we have Chantel Massey here. I don't know if you heard of that brown bag, the first African-American business directory. Chantel, can you please come over here and speak with the people? Looking lovely in her paisley, paisley lace jacket. Looking lovely. Can you speak with the people about that brown bag, please? Oh, sure. So that brown bag is Buffalo's Minority Business Directory. Um, what we're looking to do is to reinvest back into the community the dollars that we make, um, use our buying and our spending power. So I have approximately 200 businesses right now, all brown or black owned. Um, I'm still accepting submissions. There will be a special holiday push to shop brown or black for the 2018 shopping season. Um, that should be released just prior to Black. Black Friday. So if you're interested, um, everything is that brown bag. Facebook, Instagram, it's that brown bag at gmail.com. Um, and again, I am accepting submissions for the holiday edition until November 5th. Okay, um, and then um, also my counterpart, because the brown bag is part of the Dopeness Project, is um, artist and um, revolutionary, uh, Mr. Jay Hawkins Sr who's also on his way over here now. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> All right, okay. All right, and we're talking about the Dopeness Project, that brown oh, okay. bag, and, okay. and revolutionary strokes. Oh, okay, oh, the brands, <laughs> yes. the brands. There okay, go, cool. Um, well, the Dopeness Project is, uh, that's our baby right there, you know what I'm saying? It was, and uh, it's just really arts and culture. It focuses on arts and the culture scene in Buffalo, and um, giving people a platform to express their talent. Um, the brown bag, which is, which is her baby, and she has my full support in it and support of a lot of people in Buffalo. Um, she's been on a lot of publications about it, uh, the new Channel 7, but it's a directory for small businesses, black-owned, Hispanic-owned, you know what I'm saying, people that really are in support of 
minority business in, in the communities that they serve. Um, and uh, Revolutionary Strokes is my artist brand as artist, J.P. Hawkins Sr. Um, you could be seeing much more coming from Revolutionary Strokes and big things coming up in the, in the works. And um, shout out to Buffalo Zone, which is a, a great group of diverse artists here in the 716 looking to grow our talents in a greater market. And we got to do that by, by, you know, making it happen here first. So shout out to my man Jalen, shout out to Lisa and everybody that is involved with Buffalo Zone and all the wonderful artists. Shout out to the Western New York Urban Arts Collective and um, all the platforms that they have given and, uh, you know, the 716 culture. Let me get this microphone back. And Ms. D, Ms. D Edwards and, and all the other, John, John and uh, James. And I think Ms. D is actually on her way over to talk to us as well. Oh, oh yep. All right. Okay, so we got we got Miss 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 Edwards, Miss D Edwards coming to the microphone. Come on in, Miss D. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hi, I'm D Edwards. And this is my artwork here. Um, oil on canvas. I enjoy doing still lives. And uh, it's a pleasure being a part of the um, Buffalo's own art group. Do I want to drink it? This one. Mm -hmm. And this one as well. Still lives. I enjoy doing still lives. Thank you. Hey, so I'm sitting here with Jaden Law. Uh, we just talked to some of his uh, associates, and we first saw him at the Jefferson Avenue Art Show, and I talked about there. I was really impressed with some of the things that I learned. Like, first, I didn't know what he taught me about watermelon. <laughs> but um, tell me, how long have you been painting? Uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time out to speak with me. Um, I've been painting since the age of four. Um, I've been dabbling in a lot of different mediums. Primarily with painting, four years old, I used to create um, children's stories as well as comic books. And during that whole process of creating children's stories or comic books, I would, in daycare and all the way up until first grade, I would um, produce the book and I would sell them um, to my classmates, not for monetary values, but things like extra time on the computer or extra snacks, snacks and what have you. So four years old up until now. How old are you now? 26. Have you, do you have, these are two works behind you that you've done, right? Could, what is the, start with this one here. What's the name of this? Um, yes, this work right here is called Sahasara, and it means thousand petaled lotus. I don't know how familiar you are with um, chakra systems, chakra spiritual systems, but um, Sahasara is the belief that within the human body you have seven primary um, vortexes in your body that influences um, different bodily systems. So the highest point is at the top of your head, which is called the seventh chakra or the thousand petal lotus. Um, with this piece, I live painted in early March of 2018 for a domestic violence awareness event at a local historic African-American theater known as the National Black Theater in Harlem, New York. And I painted this on stage to represent, to reflect um, the ongoing statistics of domestic violence against women in America. So what I was try aiming to convey here is through all the different struggles that women go through in in, the, in our society when it comes to whether well, domestic violence or just in just certain injustices um, she is tapping within herself to, to is tapping to her in, in her inner power in order to resolve those issues that plague her throughout her day-to-day -day experiences and what's the other one this one right here is called butterfly so I was doing some research on on butterflies and one of the most interesting pieces about a butterfly that intrigued me is how they eat and digest food so what they do is they they suck the nectar from a, a flower 
um, in order to get the necessary nutrients to go about their day-to-day -day survival. So I, intuitive, intuitive inspiration, I wanted to use that process of how they eat to reflect that in a intimate relationship. So what I did here is I turned the face of one human being to a butterfly, and then I turned the face into another human being to a flower to reflect that dynamic of how I, I would imagine a couple who is deeply involved with each other would may feel. Now, one of the things that I'm impressed with is that you know you even just painting a picture you saw in your head. You did a lot of research. Is that something that you do uh, for all your work or is it something that you just like to be able to know for the back of your head and where, what was the inspiration? Um, I would say 95% of my work is based around some level of research or, or reading um, that I may have come across or stumbled across. Um, I think as an artist, in my humble opinion, um, I have multiple jobs. So one job is to reflect things, reflect reality as, as it is, to project a reality of what it can be for good or for, or for what's bad, and to educate the people who observe my work. So with each work that you see that I create has to tell a story and convey a story that will be able to not only leave you thinking about your own belief systems around that particular subject, but will leave you educated and hopefully influence your th decision making moving forward when you walk away from that artwork or whether if you purchase that artwork. Okay, now another thing that uh, came out when we were talking before the art show, I was impressed by your ability to, to, to monetize your, your art. And not that you can make you're getting rich for, off of doing uh, your work, but as people are asking you things, you you can't just make a painting and it's there and people buy it. How, tell me about the actual marketing in, of your of your of art, especially black art. I think over the years, artists have there's been this this gap between that artists cannot be business owners or like art and business don't mix together so artists need are just inca so incapable of being of being business so business suave that they need people middlemen so to speak to be able to do that job for them so they can just he or she can be able to just focus primarily on creating the artwork and through that process has been it has negatively impacted the perception of our artists as well as negatively impacted their an artist's internal belief that he or she is able to monetize their work. So in 2013, when I was in, while I was in college, uh, I would ask my professors um, about business aspects of, about being an artist and how to monetize off your artwork, but they wouldn't give me the answers. Um, they were very good at giving me the technical and theory and color theories and art history but on being an artist, but they couldn't give me how to be almost like a, pa a, Pablo, a Pablo Picasso, have the, how to have that business mind or be an Andy, Andy Warhol. Not money you die. Exactly. How, how, do you enjoy, how do you get heaven on earth now instead of when you pass away? So I, it was that moment, July 2013, where I've taken upon, I've taken upon myself to learn the business, as, business aspect of how to sell a product and how to market and how to advertise a product. And in that process of that, it's almost it's the net best way I can best analogy I can I can make with that is I literally jumped off a cliff and I'm literally I'm building the parts of a plane while I'm I'm falling ten thousand feet out of the air. So, you know, it hasn't been the easiest road, but of course it's been the most well rewarding road. Um, Taking the knowledge that I've acquired throughout the years from mentors and through, through constant research on just business, having a bit high business acumen has really helped me in that process. Now, I'm, I dabble in, in uh, drawing, but me as an artist is with music. And I deal with a lot of artists, you know, vocal artists, musicians that hope that they, they, they hope they can get a recording contract. Well, you know that's their that's their big payoff is to get a recording contract with that. 
what is the uh, without you having you know a lot of artists uh, of your type don't really become famous until after they die. I don't know why it is, but so, so do, do you? Is it possible to be alive and well known? Yes, whole heart, one hundred percent. I believe it's possible because um, I've had. I was able to see, feel, and touch examples of artists who are at that level of fame, as well as financially thriving off their own their products and services. Um, and I 100% believe it's possible for me, which is why I, so lack of a better words, have taken the the so-called risk in order to elevate myself as a business owner and as a creative. To, in order to achieve those goals. Um, right now, I would say, if I had to make an, an assessment or a measurement of where I am in that process of enjoying the fruits of my labor and still being on this earth, I would say um, I'm 75% there, like I'm at that line. All it takes, I'm, I'm one moment away from breaking through. And the confirmation is, being in front of the camera right now in front of you. The confirmation is having, having the, the pleasure of meeting so many good people who are on the same path as me and as, as like-minded to achieve those things in their own personal lives and using that fuel to, in order to achieve that particular goal. I really, I really enjoy watching you work at the art show and I, and I, I see the uh, painting you're working over there. Um, can you tell me about that? Or is, it a see, or is it a wait and see how it comes out? Well, that particular painting over there is inspired. It was an idea. It was a thought that I had this whole week in mind, but I didn't know how I wanted to manifest it, so to speak, onto the canvas. Um, traditionally, when you go to certain like wine art events, um, people will either do they'll document the, their environment or what's going on on the painting or they may do something tr traditional like uh, somebody pouring wine in a bottle. But I wanted to take a different approach. I wanted to take the silhouette of the human being and that human being is being filled up with the wine and that wine being a representation of whatever the observer may feel in that moment. Like for me personally, um, I'm titling the work Fill Me, Fill Me Up. Um, and it's a reflection of Want it, for me to wanting to be fulfilled with only those good, positive, constructive things that will help me get towards my goals. Um, earlier today, my energy was pretty low, so that played, and I was going through a meditative meditative process of finding and looking for things to fill me up in order to gain the momentum to, in order to be as successful as I am today in this moment. So. If I had to make an assessment of, in terms of a story and the meaning behind that, that would be the meaning behind that for me in terms of that particular artwork. That's cool. That's cool. And uh, you, you did some work. You did a live, is it called live painting, at the art show. And this is this what you're doing now is called live painting. Let, let's go over there for a second. Take a couple of shots. Well, as I was explaining earlier, um, <laughs> for me, as I was explaining earlier, for me, this work is a representation of um, wanting to do something different, more something more surrealistic instead of a traditional painting a wine glass and pouring a, um, wine into the bottle as the terms of a, a concept in relation to the event. I wanted to do something of, that represents wanting a human being, the subject, being a human being wanting to be filled up with um, with the wine and that wine being representation of wanting to be filled up with things that are constructive and nourishing to its soul in the moment. So am I thinking too much into it or does it, is it relevant that the bottle is not showing? I don't think you're thinking too much of it, into it at all. Um, I purposely did that because I wanted to fo I wanted the focal point to be the the human who is the silhouette of the wine glass and the the liquid which is being the red wine being poured into the human being. So I wanted the observer to fo to be able to be hit with those things. But I I like your eye I like your eye 
and that you notice that now that it's a confirmation that I am on the right path as I'm building upon it. Well, that was I was because initially I was thinking, okay, is that the bottom? And I said, okay, well, it's like the wine is coming from. So it, it, I think that's what it looks like is that the focus is not on what wine is on where the wine is going. It's like it's almost like the analogy of um, Bruce Lee's movie Enter the Dragon. At the beginning, after the sparring session, when he was mentoring that young kid, and he was like, "Be the not not be the water, but." If you look at my finger, don't focus so much on my finger, but focus on the direction I'm t I want you to go. Um. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm glad that you took the time to talk to us. And I'm going to try to get you because I had uh, some others. And you know, I'm going to make time, or Sundays are actually going to be more time for me. So um, here we are. So thank you again. No problem. It's always a pleasure. And thank you for coming out today. Hey, yo, I go by the name of DJ Bandy the Black. Mr. Well Connected, even more respected. A.K.A. I am Buffalo. And I now present to you, Dunny Gage. It's called Buffalo. This one's for the streets. I tell them one time, keep counting my feet. DJ Bandy and Bandana. My swag was down. My luck was up. It's cold right back here. I'm only 19 in this juvenile facility Where everyday niggas getting cut just because So I made a vow when I was cuffed on that bus To keep this sucker free and keep it G no matter what Now I'm in this box screaming I don't give a f up I'm hungry cause I've been in here for like a month The CEO said if I don't shut up then I don't eat This shit it's been like a week I'm getting weak I tried to write my fam about this a couple times, but they never get my kites when I let them fly. Why? And I think I might know why. why? Cause the CO is the mailman. At the same damn time. Got blessed, had it on my neck in jail. Uh, that shit was like hell, but I knew that guy was on my side. My luck was up.